So, hello guys, my name is Max, and welcome to this video today, where we're going to create a simple Flappy Bird clone using JavaScript and HTML. And we will create it so it also will work on both mobile and on desktop. So the first part of the series will be just us creating the, the game, actual game, and then the second, I will do a second part as well, where I show you how you can uh, change this, how you can change the uh, JavaScript uh, CSS and HTML to an APK or uh, iOS app file, Android or iOS app file using the Lulay uh, Cocoon JS framework that I have uh, sort of looked into how it worked and stuff like that. But let's get started with the first part of the series. Will uh, that will just be the creation of the actual game? So to start off, just if you want to. Follow, follow this tutorial, just go to my GitHub page and in my YouTube tutorial repository with the, and in the Flappy folder here you can see a starter folder with just some starter files for this particular project and that just include a index file with some basic metadata that sets the viewport and actually say that this is a web app and some styling as well and we also have this sheet image with the basic graphics for the game and a sprite file that just sort of load all the all of the sprites in the sprite sheet for us and i just do this uh, <laughs> manually so yeah and i thought that wouldn't be so fun to watch so i just uh, put that into the into the start file anyway let's get started coding our game now then so for this time, I will use this sort of syntax where I specify the var keyword up here, and then I can say canvas uh, context width and height and stuff like that. That will be inside, uh, or that will be, uh, yeah, prepended with this var keyword here. So these are all variables uh, like so. And we will also need some uh, variables here that will set to zero at the start. So our frames uh, variable best a score variable sorry and a best variable that will be set to zero and then we'll use a state machine in this sort of the same way we did in the astro game but not as big so we we'll take the current state here and we have the states object here so we have the splash state and I'll set that to zero the game state set that to one and then we have the score state that we set to two like so then we of course need a bird so we say bird and that's also an empty object for now and then the pipes object like so and here we can actually close off the the variables that we declared like that so we will also need some game functions here so we have a main function a run function uh, and uh, an update function like so and lastly a render or draw function like so and in that area just make sure it's all the main functions so the game actually starts here and let's just space it out a bit like so and we can start with the main file for now so we set the canvas create it so we say document dot create elements uh, canvas like so and let's set the width uh, to the width of the window, so say window dot inner width, like so, and the height to the inner height of the window, so say window dot inner height. Then we can say here to check if it's a mobile device. That problem is that the width is less than, uh, yeah, let's say uh, 500 pixels. So if the screen size is below 500 pixels, then we can be pretty certain that uh, that it is. Uh, uh, what do you say, a uh, mobile we are dealing with. So then we have set the width to, let's say, 320 pixels and the height to 4. Oh, sorry, this should be bigger than 500 pixels. And so if it is a desktop, that is, sorry, I got that in the wrong way. So this is just to set a basic size for uh, the, the, the canvas when we are inside of a desktop environment. And we can also set uh, some styling here while we are in the, on a desktop, so let's set a border style. So you say canvas style border, and we set one pixel, let's say solid, and uh, let's say black for the color, like that. Now we just set the width 
to the width and the height to the height of the canvas here. Like so, and grab the context. We say context equals canvas to get context 2D, like so, and let's append that. Uh, append the canvas to the body of the document. So document of body dot append child uh, canvas. So for now, if we just open this up in a browser, we should see the canvas run for us in the middle of, of the screen. So that's good. But let's open up the console to add some debugging later on. Or probably we'll probably get something wrong doing this game. But anyway, let's continue. So after we have appended the, the canvas to the document. Let's create this image object here. Uh, that'll just be equal to a new image. And that's of course the sheet image here that we're going to load. So we say image on load, sorry, should be a dot on load here. So that equal to a function uh, like so. And let's just set the source here before we do anything else. So we say res uh, sheet.png like that. And let's just log out the message to see if it uh, actually are loading. Yeah, so the image are loading at least. The test message is written out. So when the image are loading, we just want to call this init sprites method that is in this sprite.js file that we include here in the head of the, of the HTML file. So let's just call that. And let's call the run method. And as a parameter, this took the image object. So or the image object with all of the, uh, yeah, with the, with the, with the graphics we're going to use. So let's, uh, yeah, here this this image parameter there. So let's just say, uh, you can say this here since this is pointed towards this object, which is of course the image we are uh, interested in, like that. So let's do a loop function real quick. So inside of here, sort of that. We will just call the updates and the render methods or render functions. And then we use window request animation frame and the animation frame for our looping here. So we say uh, with the loop and the canvas as arguments there, like so. And let's just uh, write, draw uh, one of the sprites to the canvas real quick. So you can say. Uh, let's draw the background image so we can say uh, as s I don't know what's going BG so s this just means that it's a sprite I just use that convention here and all of the names are here so the bird sprite that's actually a list of three sprites uh, all of the different frames and then we have the background sprite foreground sprite the pipe sprites uh, some text a text object with all of the text sprites and so on and so forth Anyway, let's draw the background. So we say s.bg.draw, and that took the context and a position, a way to draw it. So let's draw that 0, 0 now. Hopefully now, yeah, it seemed to work. So we have the uh, the background draw. But we, will, uh, we want it to be drawn down here. So for doing that, we just take the y position here, we take the height minus the height of the, of the background sprite. Yeah, so now it is down here, but as you can see, we miss a bit uh, here to the right. So let's draw uh, one more background, like so. But this time, let's offset it from the left by the width of the background sprite. So now we have the complete uh, sprite drawn like that. But we probably want we probably don't want a white background. So to do that, I just took. Uh, the background color here and save that to the background as well so as an additional property here to the background. So we can just say context.fill style equals actually we can do that inside of here. So here we can say context.fill style equal to the bg dot uh, color like that. So we have that done and then we just uh, fill the complete canvas with the uh, with, uh, or, sorry, we draw a fill rectangle of, on the complete canvas. So we can say 0, 0, and the width and the height feels like so. And that didn't really work, so let's see what that can be about. Let's drag it up here and see if that works. 
Oh, sorry, it isn't uh, initialized, uh, <laughs> so we need to have it uh, below here, uh, below the in its price method. So open now to work. Yeah, so now the background is drawn as well. So let's draw the foreground real quick, or or let's draw the foreground, foreground I should say. Uh, so s dot fg dot draw, and that draws to the context, and that's zero. For now at least, and that's the height minus the height of the foreground, so that should draw it like that. And then of course, the same cost as above here, we just offset a second one with the width of the foreground, uh, like that. So we have that done. So that's cool. But we probably don't want it to be drawn at zero at all times, we want the position to be updated here. So let's create this uh, foreground position. Actually, we can save it. Ooh. Yeah, let's say let's call it F uh, F foreground foreground pos like that, and let's have it here as well. So we have foreground position plus the offset like that, and uh, let's create that variable on the top here as well. So we have the foreground position. So foreground pos. And let's set that to zero at the start as well. And then the update, we just update the foreground position. So you say foreground position uh, plus equals, and here we say frames modulus uh, some constant here. Well, actually, no, we don't do not. So we say you say foreground position plus. Uh, we can say equals actually equals foreground position plus two. And then modulus and constant here that we will figure out. I just said 10 for now. Uh, but we should actually increment the frames each update here, so do that as well. Anyway, so for now the foreground should be moving. Yeah, but it's moving in the wrong direction, and I think 10 here is a bit too small. So let's try 12, see what that looks like. A bit jerky as well. Let's try 14. Yeah, so 14 seems to be the right uh, modulus there for you. And you can see that it runs smoothly across the bottom of the of the canvas. So, that's cool. So we now have the basic background drawn. So let's uh, draw the bird now. So that's simple enough. But we, of course, first need to create this uh, object here, so we have an update method uh, like so, and we have a draw method as well and we can uh, on that we will also have on the, both of the pipes and the bird but we will start with the bird here, so we have an X position and that won't actually change, but I will set that to 80 for now, a Y position let's set that to 0 at least for now, and then we'll have a uh, what will more have will have a frame variable with, of which uh, sprite it's uh, going to draw. So it's called frame. And then we'll have an animation sequence, and this is which order all of the sprites are going to be drawn. So the first, and if you look here on the sheet image, it has uh, three sprites. So we want to draw the first sprite once, and then the second sprite, and the third sprite, and the first, uh, the second sprite again. I'm going to start with the first again, so we can say 0, 1, 2, 1, like that, to get the animation sequence that we are... Uh, sorry, the, the, the animation frequency, uh, sequence, sorry, like that. Now we also have a rotation, and we'll set that to 0 at the start here, and our gravity um, variable here, so... and the gravity of uh, how of what the bird is, yeah, which uh, is affecting the bird, like that, and then it also have a jump, uh, jump uh, variable here. So each time we press down, so how much the bird actually will jump up, like that. And speaking of jump, we also have a jump method that we will call outside of the bird. And in here. Uh, we can actually do that first here, so we just say uh, this dot velocity <laughs> that I actually didn't create, and we velocity, 
and that's just equal to minus the jump uh, jump constant, like so. So we just, let's just set the velocity here as well, and let's set it to zero at the start. So, but let's uh, yeah. But first, before we do anything in the update, though, let's just create the draw function to see if we if we can draw the sprites. And let's say that if we take a context as a parameter, like that, and then we just draw the sprite. And for this one, since we are going to rotate the sprite, we will use the context uh, save and restore methods. Uh, sorry, the, the translate and rotate method of the of the canvas rendering context 2D. So we say context of translate, and it if actually. So we actually translate the complete coordinate system uh, using this method. So we say context.translate and uh, let's uh, translate it to the x and y positions. So say this x and this y, like so. And then let's uh, rotate the context. So we say this.rotation. And then let's draw the image. So we say context.draw Im uh, image. Oh, so sorry. We should draw the canvas, so we say, uh, or the bird sprite. So we say s bird dot draw like that, and with the context like that, and then we say half of the width of the bird for the x position, and half of the width, uh, so, sorry, half of the height of the bird for the x uh, for the y position, like that, and as I said, the bird. Is this uh, list of of uh, sprites like that? So we will, of course, need to specify which frames we're going to draw. And uh, here we will say this of frame. And this is of course this uh, index up here. So that's it for the, the draw function of the bird. So let's see if it works. So we can just go down here below the actually above the foreground layer, and we can say bird draw. To the context like true. So let's see if it's drawn. Uh, well, it wasn't drawn really, so let's see what that can be about. Mm -hmm. so the A. Let's try to just set 100 here for web position. Nope. One second, guys, and I'll debug it, then I'll be back. Yeah, and I figure out the error here. This, of course, is a null error here since we are just saying s dot bird dot the width and the dot height. We, of course, need to say which an index here as well. So, for that, let's uh, actually use this n field here. Uh, so, that we said it's up here, so we say that's just equal to this dot animation and sorry, and uh, this dot frame. Like that to get the right uh, uh, animation frame that we are interested in. And hopefully now the bird should be drawn to the canvas. Yeah, and here you can see that the bird is drawn. So let's make the position update a bit here. Uh, so for that we'll use this uh, sort of in the update method. We can say here we can say uh, yeah. Uh, let's just say, let's check if the current state here. So, say if the current state is the states uh, dot splash. So, in the splash, we want the bird to flap with a lower frequency than we want to do when it's in the game state. So, we can say if the current state is the splash state, let's actually set the, set the current state to the splash states in the main method. Uh, so down here, so let's just set the current state. So say current state equals uh, states dot splash like that. So now the, this n field here should be have ten in it, and then we we'll set the frame. Oh, sorry, increment the frame here. If the if the frames modulus this n constant here is equal to zero, then we want to increment it. Else we just want to keep it at the current frame and then so we loop over 
over what you say. So we start from the start uh, when the frame is uh, when we are going to the end here. So we say yes, we just model it, model this uh, of the, the length of the animation sequence. So they say this dot length. So this is the animation dot length. And uh, we, of course we don't we uh, don't call the update method. So let's do it. So we we'll say bird dot update and let's actually call the pipe that update here as well. And the pipe that go down here with the context as a parameter. Yeah, so now you can see that the bird is flapping, or yeah, what whatever that's called. So that's cool. So yeah, so let's update the position a bit, and we can do that uh, here in the update method as well. So just kind of say, uh, what do you say? We check if the current state again is the uh, splash state. So we say state dot uh, splash. Um, and then we have set the y position to the height uh, minus some constant here. So let's say it's 270 or yeah, 280 maybe. And then we can say plus 5 times math dot not me <laughs> meter that the cosinus of the frames field of frames variable divided by some constant here to ease it out a bit. And let's just set the rotation here as well to zero when we add it here. So open now the bird should be moving up and down like that. Just one second guys, we are back. Yeah, sorry for that guys, I'm back. So yeah, we now have debate the, the the bird drawn to the canvas as well. But we will want some more stuff to be drawn uh, to the canvas when we are doing the uh, when we are in the splash dates and uh, there's one small tweak here. I think the bird is a bit uh, far to the, to the right here so let's just say 60 instead here. Yeah, I think that's better. Anyway, so we go down to random method again. Down here we can say uh, let's say here after we have drawn the pipes and the bird, actually you can do it the, all the way down here. So you say if the current state again is the splash state, so we say state dot splash like that. Then we want to draw the splash green. So you say uh, s dot splash and dot draw like that, and to up to the canvas, of course. And then we want to center it in both directions. So we say, uh, uh, let's just actually let's just calculate the center of the canvas here first. So we say, uh, width uh, two equals to the width over two, like that. Now we can say width two minus the height of the splash screen um, sprite. So we say, sorry, width uh, like. Two, and for the x position, so, so for y position, let's set uh, height minus three hundred, and let's see what that looks. Like. Yeah, so that's the uh, what do you say? The, the the that that sprite drawn to the canvas. Then we also want to draw our text to the canvas. So we say text dot draw uh, to the context again, and then we say width two minus. Uh, and of course we want to specify which text we want to draw here and as you can see here the text is have this sort of uh, javascript object so we will draw the get ready message so it say yes text s dot text dot get ready dot draw like that and then we want to have the width of that text again so we will just say uh, say it like zoom and then the height minus some constant here Let's say minus 380. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. So that's all for the for the for the splash state. Uh, so let's do the, the let's do the game state now. So yeah, that's uh, quite simple. We of course, need to first of all we'll need to have. Uh, um, mean to trans to transition between different states. Uh, 
and now so for that I will just have this on press method here so we say function on press like that and that will take a event here as a parameter and inside of here we just do a switch of the current state all the cases here so there are the cases states dot uh, splash case uh, states dot game of course and we have this uh, states dot score I think we call it yeah and here we just call the break for now like that so we have that on so uh, when we are pressing and the current state is the splash state then we want to set the current state to this to the game state so we say states of game uh, like that and we also want to uh, make the bird jump so we say bird dot jump like that in the game state we only want the bird to be jumping so we say bird dot jump like that and in the scores state it's a bit more complicated so we will leave that empty for now at least but we haven't um, uh, set this method to an uh, any other event yet so let's do that so if it is a, a web browser then we want to listen for the mouse down event so we say add event listener uh, let's we can actually do it like this. So we say bar event equals also we can call it EBT like that. And we set that to touch uh, so like this touch start at the in the normal case here. But if it is the web browser, then we say mouse down like that. And then we just add an add an event listener, so we say document dot add event listener like so and we will listen for the event and we want to call the on press method when we are uh, calling this so open now when we click on the uh, we have some errors here so we say add event list let's try again yeah so now when we click on the canvas this uh, background this uh, the splash screen should be removed yeah, and that seems to be the case here. And as you can see, the bird is actually uh, flapping a lot quicker now. But we haven't done any updating of the bird in the uh, uh, other than in the in the splash case. So let's do that. Uh, so let's just go back up to the uh, update method, and here we can say else. Uh, else here, so if it's not the current state, uh, if if the if the current state is not the splash state, then we want to uh, update the bird normally here. So we have saved this dot velocity at the gravity uh, constant uh, to the velocity, yeah, like that, and this should cost with this. And then we add uh, the the velocity. To the wipe position, say this of velocity like so. And then we check some errors here, so we check if the wipe position is uh, uh, bigger than the height of the sorry, the position of the foreground. So we say uh, like that, and let's say minus 10 for some uh, offsets here. Then we just want to set the wipe position to the height uh, my, uh, to the yeah, to the same. Position here, so you say f uh, height minus 10, like that. And I don't know why I sp spelled this all the time here today, <laughs> anyway. And then, and if this this is the case, then we also want to make sure that we set the current state uh, to the uh, score state if it's not already, if it if it isn't already the score state. So you say current state equals uh, states dot uh, score state like that and then we will set the velocity here uh, to the uh, jump uh, jump speed here uh, just to make it just to don't uh, so don't just so this velocity here um, won't grow yeah uh, out of hand here. anyway so we have this done so then we just check uh, here 
uh, we will do the rotation so actually we can sh see what it looks like now so now you can see here that the bird is uh, jumping like this but we also want to implement the rotation so let's do that uh, so for doing that we are saying if the velocity is uh, bigger than the, than the jump jump speed or equals to the jump speed then we want to set the frame uh, uh, to 1 so we, we don't want the bird to flap anymore and then we set the rotation uh, fill here to the minimum value between the mat over dot pi over 2 so uh, the maximum angle can only be 90 degrees like that all the rotation plus uh, plus some constant here so let's say yeah let's say uh, 0 0.3 or something like that and else so if the speed is if the bird has some upward momentum then we want to set the rotation uh, to let's say yeah, negative 0 0.3 maybe so let's see what that looks like let's reload it and yeah you now we can see that the bird is actually rotating like that and that it's yeah when it's below a certain velocity here that it's dive like that and then if we have the game over state like that but when we are game over we probably don't want to update the foreground position so let's uh, fix that real quick so let's get go down to the update method and here we can say if the current state is not equal to the states uh, dot uh, score then we, then we want to update the foreground position so let's see if it works so bam yeah now that is um, at least and the same goes for pipes we don't want to update update the pipes position uh, when we don't have the uh, when we aren't in the in the school state or, ac or actually we only want to update the pipes when we are in the menus uh, in the game state so we do it like this instead so say when the current state is the game state, then we want to update the, the pipe. So we say pipes that update like that. Speaking of the pipes, let's uh, do that. Do those real quick. So the pipes it would only have one in in um, members here. A pipes list like that, and we we'll also have a reset method uh, where we just uh, clear. Uh, the pipes, uh, uh, what do you say? The pipes array here. So we just set that list of pipes to an empty array, like that. So let's do the uh, draw function first, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe let's do the update actually. So here we can say if uh, the frames modulus, let's say 100, so each 100 frames. Or 100 pixels in this case, I will we will push a new pipe to the pipes array, and the position of the pipe and stuff like that is a bit, uh, yeah, arbitrary to set there. But uh, sorry, so we have set the top position here. We we'll let's set that to the height minus the height of one of the pipes. It doesn't really matter since both the south pipe south facing pipe and the north facing pipe are both 200 pixels uh, tall like that so actually 400 pixels since we are multiplying the width and the x and y position share by 2 but anyway so the height of the pipe uh, like that I think yeah plus the foreground height height of the foreground as uh, so, yeah so this is just where this is the y position we are want the pipes to be drawn so let's actually call it y like that and then plus some constant here let's say 120 and plus the random position here so let's say 200 times math.random so this is uh, just to set the y position randomly within the 
border of the game. And then we just append uh, a new object here to the pipes array. So we say this.pipes.push like that. And let's set an X position and let's set that to something outside of the canvas. So let's say, yeah, let's say 500. And then set the Y position to the Y field we just created. Yeah, we calculated, sorry. And let's also set a width and a height here later when we're doing our collision detection. Not just the pipe, sorry, the, the width of the pipes. And the height here, of course, the height of the pipes. Like that. So that's it for the uh, creation of new pipes. Then we just update all the pipes. So we say for var i equals uh, zero len equals this dot pipes dot length. Like that, i is less than len, and then i plus plus like two. So. Then we just take out the current pipe. So we say this dot pipes that's i like that, and then we just uh, update the position. I think yeah, so you say uh, p dot x plus equals, or oh, sorry, minus equals since we are going uh, to the left, like that. And then we just check here if the x position is uh, less than, let's say, minus 50. Or so if it's outside of the canvas, then we want to uh, remove that pipe from the from the pipe array. So we say this dot pipe stop splice at i and we want to splice one object. And then we just want to increment, oh sorry, decrement the length and the i fields like so. So that should be it for the pipes, at least for now before we do any collision detection and stuff like that, which is quite important in Flappy Birds. But anyway, let's do the draw method. So we can just copy this for loop here, since we don't want to type it all, all the time. And in our way, we just take out the current pipe here, so pipe uh, this stop bar p equals this dot pipes at i and I want to draw it so we say uh, s pipe south dot draw like that then we'll draw the context and a p dot x and p dot y position then we want to draw the north facing sprite as, uh, pipe as well so we say uh, north like that and for the y position here we just want to add the gap between the two pipes, so let's say 80 pixels plus the height of the pipe, like that. So for now, we should see the pipes drawn to the canvas if we have done this correctly, and that seems not to be the case here. So let's, I will just debug this real quick, guys, and I see when I'm back. <laughs> yeah, I'm so stupid, I didn't re even realize it. Uh, <laughs> I've written all of this in the reset function and not in the draw function. Ah, shit, that's so stupid. Anyway, I just added it to the draw function and let's see now if it works. And it still doesn't work, so bear with me guys, I'll be right back. Yeah, and I still had uh, <laughs> the empty of the pipes there. I'm so stupid. Let's see how it works then. Yeah, so now you can see that the pipes are drawn. So of that, guys. Uh, I'm so stupid. Yeah. Uh, so we are closing up to the end here. At least of the first uh, video of this. This uh, was a bit longer than I expected. And I have other things to do today. So I will actually split it up in uh, two, maybe three videos. So yeah. But let's just finish the collision detection, so we have that done at least, and then we'll finish the rest of the game in another video. So, let's do that. So, let's just go up, up here again to the update method. And the collision detection we are going to use here is a circle-rectangle collision. This can be a bit complicated, but uh, yeah. Is pretty straightforward. But anyway, we check here, we say if i is equal to zero, so if it is the uh, front um, most pipe, that's the one we want to check collision against, then we use this, then we calculate the closest x position 
using this clan snippet here that we have used in many other tutorials like yeah like the restriction of the what do you say the paddles in the pawn game and stuff like that anyway and the values we want to check against is the x position of the bird the pipe position uh, um, and the x direction and the maximum of oh, sorry the x position of the pipe here plus the width of the pipe like so then we have two uh, y positions to calculate here so you say mat so we, we clamp again here so you say clamp like that and we say bird or y uh, p or y like that and we have um, a p of y plus p of height like that and this should be the what do you say the south facing um, uh, south facing pipe then we have the other one so we say clamp again here and for the value values this time we do uh, uh, yeah we want to check against the y position of course still and we have the p of y plus the p of height plus 80 since the offset is 80 i think if we do that in the draw method yeah so 80 here is the offset and for the max position that is of course just equals p of y plus 2 times p of height plus 80 like that and that should give us the closest positions like that and then we want to do two two checks here but first we want to check the uh, difference in the x and y positions here so you say bird of x minus the closest x position and then we have uh, two y positions again to check here so you say bird of y minus cy1 and the same here for the uh, delta uh, two position here so you say cy2 like that and then we have the uh, two and the two uh, distance here so yeah and this is uh, sort of the equation for a circle we are of Pythagoras theorem we are using here but anyway so I have the, the, the distance 1 and that's just dx times dx plus dy1 sorry plus dy1 times dy1 like that and then we just change this to 2 here like that so we have that done and then we just want to return here so you say bird the radius actually we can call r here first to say r equals bird the radius uh, times bird the radius we don't have this radius field yet but we will soon add it and we want to return if r is bigger than d uh, d1 or r is bigger than d2 like that then we want to set the current state to this to the score state that means that the bird has been hit so let's just do this radius field on the bird real quick so we say radius for the collision circle here and let's set that to let's try some different things so let's try 12 for now and just so we can see the the how do you say the circle for now let's just draw the, draw it out to the context of the game path part here sorry and the uh, uh, context dot stroke like that and then we'll say uh, context dot arc I think that's the method anyway we, we will soon see zero zero and this the radius here and then between which uh, which between which uh, angles we want to create here so say two times that by pi to get a complete 360 degrees of course let's see if it works yeah so you can see that the bounding box of the bird is drawn a bit too subtle and yeah you can see if, if when we hit the pipe the bird is dying so let's do it do it like below here instead i think and let's do it with the uh, fill yeah Anyway, let's just set uh, the fill style as well, so just so we can see it. Uh, just so we can see it here. So we say context of fill 
style, let's set it to red. So you can see it? Yeah. So you can see that that's the collision we are going that we are the bounding box of the bird. Yeah. And you can see that the game is as annoying as it is in the on the mobile phone. Anyway, so I think that's it for this video. So I thank you for watching guys. And I hope I see you in the next video. Uh, yeah, so that's it. There's one thing though. Let's just draw the, what do you say? Let's draw the bird in front of the pipes. I think that looks a bit better while we are dying here. So let's test that. Yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.